So, hey, we're going to get rocking here. So we are honored today to have my good friend, Craig Mehew, from Colorado Springs. And uh, Craig, so just give you a background. Craig, you know, had a business that he ran for many years, sold that business, traveled the world and the country in a van and a mobile, well, it was a, it was a bus, really, wasn't it? Mobile yeah, home for two yeah. years, learned how to. Now, guys, he advertised on this bus. This was how many years ago, Craig? 15 years ago? Yeah, yeah. He advertised on that bus to get people to pay for his trip. This was, I don't know if they paid for all of it, but they paid for a portion of it. This was 15 years ago. This was not when everybody had their vans and were driving around and having their blogs. This was before that. So we're talking about a guy who did that. Then he decided to come back into real estate six, seven years ago now. Came up, has been killing it, became part of a largest brokerage up there, sold out of that a year ago, brought his team over to EXP and is really kicking it in. And today we're honored that he is going to share with you about branding. And he's going to talk about branding from the beginning of what the most of the basic things are to some advanced things that we can all do. And so it's great for those of us that are just getting started. He's going to give you some things like, hey, get this done to the advanced ones saying, Hey, go back to the basics because a lot of times the basics get lost as you get farther along. So without further ado, Craig, rock and roll, brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. Uh, I'll try and live up to that. Uh, I, I, I think I can. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. it you know, I'm always, I'm always honored to be able to join you all and be here to share kind of my insight um, it's it's always a work in progress, and I think you're going to even see some evidence of that today. Um, really, what I want to talk about today um, is is a concept that I that we've a lot of marketing people, but also I I call evidence of success. Um, and I think one of the biggest issues, and, and this works for whether you're an OG or you're a brand new agent. These are things that you need to be working on and constantly working on. And it's even funny today, like I'm going, you know, I'm always looking to kind of figure out what the consumer sees and how they perceive me. And, it, you know, it is there. You're going to see there's my I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. Um, but you're going to see like there's things in here that have come up and percolated up and errors and and typos and stuff that like makes me look like Santa Claus now. Um, it just sort of like will wear you down. But this is something we need to do. If you're a new agent, obviously you don't have all of this, right? You don't have this evidence of success, but it is critical for you to build this now. Don't wait. Don't wait until you're busy. Don't like, oh, I won't. I'm not going to do anything until I have some sales. I'm, you know, I'll get to that. Like, if you're a new agent, you should, today, day one. When I teach my launch class to agents um, in our organization, like this is the thing we do on day one. Literally, day one. Let's talk about your evidence of success. What does the public think and see? Um, what do they see of you? And they go look for you. And so really what I want you guys to do is also, and I know everybody does this to some degree. Um, I actually kind of find like the OG agents that have been doing it for a long time are probably the worst at it because, you know, they're busy and it's like, man, I don't need that. But um, I, I, you do need it. You do need to keep up to date on this and, and stay relevant on this. Um, and, and one of the biggest reasons is millennials. You know, I mean, we, we want to, if you're if you've got the grades like me and, and your clients are getting older, um, you know, they're either not buying houses or, you know, they are dying <laughs> They're You know, so, um, yeah, you, you want to make sure like you're picking up people that are younger and the next generation. Millennials are going to make up a, a giant portion. I think they're 30 percent now and growing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, they're going to be the next generation. They look at the world through a different set of goggles than we did as, as you know, we're sort of the. We didn't start out with the internet. It really wasn't the place we went to. They start there and figure everything out from there. You know, my generation, we would go to our parents and like, hey, who'd y'all use? That's what I did. Who'd you use to buy your house? And that's who we used. You know, millennials don't do that anymore. They go on the internet. They look for people that that, that they feel are, are going to be able to deliver, you know, both the technology, but also just that are out there that they, they're going to resonate with. You can do that. We actually do really well with millennials. 
Um, oh, they, a lot of them, it's the beard. I'm, you know, I'm just saying like the, it, it works for them. But um, other than that, you know, John's look at John. I mean, he's he's gonna, he's rocking the beard now too. So he's gonna be he's gonna be working with all the millennials. So a um, couple things I want to uh, I want to make sure we talk about too. Um, let's see. I'm gonna look at my. I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, I want you guys to start paying attention to this. And this is an ongoing thing. You should be doing this at least once a week. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe every other week, but you should be Googling yourself and seeing what's popping up um, and and constantly refining this. For me, you know, you're gonna see some evidence of this as well. I moved brokerages a year ago. If you change brokerages, holy cow, like you, you got a heavy lift. You gotta make sure you gotta get everything moved over. I'm still fighting with that a year later. I'm still fighting with trying to get all of my old brokerage stuff off and my new brokerage stuff on. So, um, and, and I think the other thing, and I want to make sure that, that I see this a lot, and I talk to a lot of agents, I'll have agents come up to me or, or they'll they'll be in my class or I'll, I'll meet them and they'll ask me like, hey, I've come across X, you know, fig, you know, whoever, whatever the latest greatest thing is that, that some vendor is selling and, you know, they, they you know, they're, like, what should I do? This looks really good. And the first thing I do is like, I'll sit down with them. I said, let's go Google you. Let's go Google your team. Let's look at what you look like on the internet. And I'm always like, man, like, how about we just fix some of this stuff first? And then you know, we'll worry about the bells and whistles later. And we'll talk more about websites and you know some of my thoughts on that um, in, a, in a little bit. Um, consumers want to know you're serious about your business and your profession, period. And that's where I go back to this evidence of success. What are you doing so that when a consumer, but if I say, hey, I've worked with John Sellers, that guy is a rock star, you should use him. You know, in the past, some people would have went, all right, I'm gonna call John. Today, what do we do? Uh, what I want you to guys start getting in, in your mindset, and I really want you to do this from now on, when you get referred a service-based business, whether it's you know a plumber, a, a lawn care specialist, a painter, you know people that do services. You know it's different to say a service based business versus a, a product. You know a products sell themselves. We services we have to sell ourselves. So um, when somebody refers you a service based business, put your little your little camera on and and think about when you go try and figure out if that's somebody we want you want to use most likely you're gonna go Google their name, right? I can't tell you how, for me, even today, like I'll go Google somebody and they just don't exist, right? Like they just haven't even taken, like they don't even have the basics done, you know, just nothing, they don't exist. That for me, it puts that little seed of doubt in your mind, like, man, how serious are these people about their business? Like, is this guy gonna show up or is this person gonna show up? Are they just shade tree? Uh, my wife and I were looking about buying a jacuzzi. I don't know if they call them that anymore. I call them hot tubs now. Hot tub. And and I needed to get somebody to move, like we were going to buy a used one and move it to our house. And the one guy I found in town that did it, like I think his, his he hadn't done anything new since like two thousand, like years and years. It was soup, and it was just horrible. And I'm like, man, that guy's level of commitment to his business seems low. You know, and it really kind of slowed me down and, and like made me think like, okay, is this, is this really the best choice? Do I want, you know, is this guy just doing this like nights and weekends? Am I going to be, you know, is, is it going to be a pain? I, I want, you know, we're trying to find a service based business. We want somebody that's professional. That's going to, you know, that is, this is their gig. So, you know, put your little third person camera on from now on when you're looking, when you're looking for evidence of success for people that rec are recommended to you, go do that to yourself frequently so that you are constantly making sure you're you, it's being done correctly. Um, consumers are going to Google period. It's going to happen. You should be And they're looking for that. Are you, are you a legit real estate agent? And again, new people don't, don't think you're, you don't have the options to do that. And we're going to talk about several things that you can do right out of the shoot that you'll be able to, to start building that evidence of success. Um, Full disclosure, I am not perfect at this. Not perfect. Like this is, you know, I, this is a never-ending process for me. I'm always trying to get it right. I'm gonna, I'm going to, you know, 
I'm going to show you, I'm going to open the kimono here and you can see like, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I, even this morning I found a freaking typo and I was like, and it's the first thing that you read is a freaking typo. I'm like, so like, don't, don't, you know, this is a never ending. I don't have all the answers. I'm just trying to make sure I'm constantly paying attention to it. Um, and then lastly, before we get going, I normally teach in front of a class. Uh, I'm very used to interactive people giving me feedback, talking. If I'm saying something that is you want more, more feedback on, I'm saying something that you think is stupid um, or just you need more, you know, you want to, you want to chime in, please chime in. I, I love when people give me feedback and, and cause it helps me kind of go and, and yeah, it's, it's just good for all of us. We're also going to learn a lot. I should probably turn that chat thing on so I can see y'all chatting. So, all right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Any questions so far? Greg, I got a question. One of the things I'd like you to share when you're going is that, you know, you said you've got to check it all the time. Uh -huh. And then maybe as you can talk through, like, how do you even correct things if they're not right? You know, like, sure. I'm not saying, I'm not sure if that's going to be part of through this, but. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll go through, so to, I'm, we're going to go through the big ones, you know. And and so, um, you know, that way we can all kind of start to get a, a feel for those. And like I said, I. I have been I have been eyeballs deep in trying to just move take off my old brokerage and move myself to EXP, um, and it's it is an uphill battle right out of the shoot. And I'm sure if any you know everybody's moved to EXP some point in the past um, or maybe started here, but um, it, it's a it's a heavy lift, and it's you you know I've just sort of been sort of picking away at it. And, and I think we're getting close, but you'll see there's some, there's some still some stuff in there. I mean, I was, are y'all seeing my screen? Is it? You know, Craig, I love that you share this evidence of success, this idea. So we call it EOS, right? So I started in, in 94, I started working with Joe Stump at Buy Referral Only. And Joanna, remember this, is that we, and we had something that was called evidence of success postcards. Because in the 90s, we didn't have technology like this, guys. Right. Like, we couldn't promote yourself unless you wanted to write a big ad in the paper. You know, so we wrote a card once a week or once a month that we mailed that was saying, told a story about how we served somebody. And yeah. that was called our Evan Success. So the guy deal was to send a post, uh, uh, really a, a newsletter once a month to our clients, our sphere of influence, and an Evan Success. And the goal was to keep growing our sphere of influence, even people we have to do this, and getting those evidence success out there so that we we're telling different stories all the time about different people we'd helped. Right. And this is a better way that you can, it's not better, it's just different. I think print still is a valuable tool, but this yes. is a way that you can start building right away and build that visibility because it's not really who has done the most deals. It's who's created the, the right presence in the market. Right. And well, and the stats, the stats ferret that out, you know, the, the, because the number is 82%. That's a NAR number. 82% of people don't use their, the agent that they used last time. Right. And a lot of times we've all seen this, right? I mean, you, you, you just happen to be like, Hey, you want to sell your house? You want uh, having a conversation, real estate conversation. And, um, you know, you, you happen to be at the right, I mean, let's face it, a lot of this is just dumb luck. Like you just happen to be at the right place at the right time. You ask the right questions, you build a relationship and you're their guy now, or you're their gal now. And that's just how it happens. So, you know, but, you know, I, so this process that we're going to talk about this evidence of success is part of something bigger, a bigger concept, which I, you know, I, I call culmination of noise, right? So in, in this, the, the, the culmination of noise theory is like what you're talking about, John. So are you sending newsletters? Are they getting postcards? Are they getting magazines? Are you doing pop buys? Are you doing, you know, events where they're seeing you or seeing your brand? And then, oh, and I've seen him online. And then when I went and I looked at him or her on, um, when I Googled them, yeah, look, these guys are legit. They're doing business, right? So there is no there is no silver bullet, right? We all agree. 
No silver bullet here. I've heard another thing, Craig, called the spider web theory. The spider web theory is the same thing. Yeah, culmination. Yeah, and so you keep adding pieces to your web keeps getting bigger. Yes. So, and then the idea is you're the light behind the the web, right? And eventually, more things fly into that web because you create you become more attractive. So your light is growing bigger, and the web sticks them. Right. Right. And these are all these multiple pieces that we build one piece at a time. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I'm going to kind of for I'm going to start at the at the basics. And actually, when I it's funny because sometimes I think like oh. I, you know, the OG agents or the, you know, the, the people that have been doing it for a while are going to be like mm, boring, but you know, really it's, I'm always shocked when I, like I get an agent who, you know, I know has been doing this for a long time and they send me an email, you know, and it's like super Craig at gmail.com. It's like, like you're still using your college email address, your Gmail address, just because it was easy. You know, it's like, okay. Let, so let, let's sort of start at the, the at the beginning here, right? Domain names, right? You should have a domain name. This is not rocket science anymore. It really is not rocket science. I, I tell people now, Google, google.com slash domains. Everybody has Google now, you know, and if you have a corporate account, it's, it's even easier. Google domains cost $12 a year per domain. And and literally like a train, they've got it, it's Google fight. It is like a trained monkey can buy a domain today. So, you know, if you don't have your own domain, you should seriously think about that. Go to google.com slash domains. And it's it's just stupidly simple. If you're already using Google, as soon as you buy that domain, it goes, hey, do you want this to be your email? It's like, yep. And then it just makes the connection and it, it it's all done for you. Um, if you can't, if you're not a tech savvy person, you know, go find a teenager or, or, you know, somebody who, you know, who can do it. It's, it's not hard. It used to be a, like a big lift. Do it all through Google. Stupidly simple. You should own your domain. The next thing you should do with that domain is connect it to stuff, right? So for example, you know, you should have the McHugh team. You know, this is, this is just a, and, and for those of you We'll see if, has anybody noticed the typo yet? You get bonus points for the F in typo. Sorry, if there are kids in the room, shouldn't say the F in word. But um, but like that was, that was, I woke up to that this morning. It's like, so I, I'll be working on that today. Um, and of course, it's the very first thing. But Craig, like, can you open that first... one up and just show everyone that's your KV core site and yeah. look that that is his, he's, He's corrected the domain. It's a lot of you probably still have an EXP site that doesn't have a domain. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really hard. Domain. It's what really easy. What does that cost, do? Craig? They they do that for what, 10 bucks, bring it over or something? Yeah, it's pretty cheap. I mean, it was it was fairly inexpensive to to do that. Can I click on it? Come on now. I don't know if my if I'm I'm maxing out on my bandwidth here at home. So um buy the domain. You, you should have that. And then link that to things. Link it to two things in particular. But if you're using KV Core or whatever platform you're using to, to do your um, your website, link it to that. KV Core, it's pretty simple. They It's called a vanity. Uh, I think they call it a vanity domain. And, yeah, and, and yeah. you just say like, hey, hook those up for me and they do it all. Of course, it's not opening up right now. So um, thanks, KV Core, for ruining my demo. Um, so um, it's going to open up right when I don't want it to. Uh, so that's one thing. So domain and then domain email. Like it's really easy. There it goes. It was it was a little sleep today, but yeah. I mean, this is essentially, and we're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna kind of come back to this. I've spent a lot of time and money uh, with a lot of different vendors for web and IDX and lead gen. Um, I've got some thoughts on that. We'll we'll come back to it, but um, I, I would love to get your guys' feedback on it as well. So, um, but yeah, get a domain. They call it a vanity domain. And then the next thing is email. Like you should have domain email. It's not it's not hard to do if you do it all through Google. Super simple. Um, you can you can just they link it all together. It, it makes it. I, I was surprisingly easy to do. I moved. Every, I used to have a a domain host. And my Gmail, and then finally, I somebody I read somewhere or somebody's like, just use Google. I moved all my domains to Google, and and it's all just super easily interconnected. So um, you should be doing that using domains. 
KV Core links it. Um, you know, well, let's actually talk about KV Core a little bit. Um, let's talk about, and I would love, I would love you guys to chime in on this and give me your feedback on this. I was a white local guy for years and years and years. Um, it was great. It was cutting edge. I know that, um, you know, uh, EXP is going to be doing a, some pretty neat AI cutting edge type lead gen. Um, I'm really excited. I know Glenn, that that's one of the big things I'm excited about for, um, uh, EXP con. They're going to be rolling out a lot of this new technology that they're going to do. Um, and I, I really want you guys feedback on this, but I, I have pulled my clients over the years. Um, and I always, you know, I, we are, our MLS has the ability to, to, you know, have like, Hey, look at these houses and go to our MLS. Um, you know, we have, we have, I have KV core, we have other tools. There's the, the new, the new brand new app that, that we just got. Um, I came in a realtor's property resource, um, has some really cool stuff. I always pull my clients and I say to them like, hey, when you went to look at that house, where did you go look? And what interactive part of the of the discussion, where do clients go look for houses? How do they go look for houses? Somebody jump in and give me some feedback. Anyway, Bueller. So many people say Zillow. <laughs> they do. All right. Here, that here's the real here's the real truth of it, right? When we want to go look at a house, when you as an agent want to go look at a house, right? What do you do? You go to Google, you enter, you type the address into Google, and what's the first thing that comes up? Zillow, Realtor, Trilia. Do you go and uh, do you keep scrolling until you find your IDX feed? or another like independent IDX, we go look at freaking Zillow, right? People don't go look on our sites anymore. We can drive them there with lead gen, with paid ads, and that's a different beast. But um, for those of you that are paying a lot of money for an IDX website right now, I would, I would challenge you to seriously consider not doing that anymore and using KV Core site. In my opinion, you are probably, you're not, the ROI on that is not great. You know, even when I had Ylopo, I mean, we would drive people there, but they wouldn't stay there. They wouldn't go, they wouldn't stick at my site. They would look at something and go away and then go back to Zillow. So, um, you know, wh why, if, if that's the, if that's the de facto standard now, whether it's Zillow, Realtor, you know, those two kind of own it right now. Why would we try and compete? Why would we spend our the the few dollars that we have to try and compete with those guys? You know, I think you're much better off taking those same dollars using something like KB Core site and then using like Make It Rain or do something else or maybe just doing boosts and pushes through KB Core. Um, I have to say, KB Core spiders really well. I mean, you know, they they have enough EXP has given them enough volume over time now that. Almost universally, if you have a team and you know you've done a few basic things in KV Core, you're gonna it's gonna spider at the top, almost a hundred percent of the time, right? And that's what we you know again if we're looking at trying to the bigger picture of evidence of success, like that looks legit to me. When I see like hey that guy's got his own website, like you know that's what the public's looking at. Like he's got his own website. It's at the top of the list. I can open it. I can click on it. You know, I really tell people like create a story website more than a than a a feed for like an IDX feed or or like a home buying site. Um, and and we're actually moving. We're, we're we are now engaging more with K, with the KV Core folks and trying to move our site much more towards a um, a story site. And here's the other thing. Uh, I can't remember where I read this or maybe I heard it. Maybe it's Tristan Hamadan. Um, He's no longer doing, um, he's not no longer trying to drive people to buy houses on his site. He is focusing his sites 100% on listings because when people are going to list a house, they don't go to Zillow. Zillow is not for listing. Zillow is for buying. So we, you know, create a site that drives listing people that are interested in the listings to you, but that site has to, you have to sell yourself. You have to sell your bigger brand. 
and and something that is is going to engage them and be sticky enough that they're going to want to either get a home valuation or get some sort of feedback, some sort of input that you can give them on what their house is worth or why they should you should sell their house. And so I'm moving that direction. I'm moving away from like, hey, go here to look at houses. They don't do that anymore. Go here to, if you want to list your house. So that's something that may even be a, another discussion we should be talking about with web. Yeah, Craig, and I, I, I would only put a caution on that for some folks is that the truth is it's a lot easier to get internet leads for buyers than it is sellers. Yes. And most agents that are getting started need leads more than they can wait, right? Or they have the resources to do what you're doing to want to build that on the listing side. So I always say, you know, you start there, right? And then you build your resources. And then the key is, uh, you know, Chris, Tristan's been doing this for a long time, right? He has a lot of resources of how to push that, right? Yes. So for most agents, I'm saying, okay, are you getting leads from the internet? Are you learning how to work them consistently? And then realize that for most people, it's a three to five year period and your listing inventory starts turning because you've taken care of people. And I think Tyler talked about that last week. And um uh, uh, you know, in that, hey, at three to five years, all of a sudden people are starting to come back now because if you've actually keeping done a good job with them, right? Right. And now, I mean, it was a while there that, uh, you know, nobody was moving, but people are going to be moving, guys. Don't worry. They say people aren't moving. Trust me, people will move. This is a temporary, bl- you know, glitch right now. Rates are going to come back down. People are going to have to move because they're having babies and they just don't. People make emotional decisions. If there was a you know, people say they're never going to move because interest rates too low. If that was true, nobody would have a thousand dollar car payment today, <laughs> right? And Tyler, you know, used to sell a lot of thousand dollar car payments. People that couldn't afford them, and it made no sense, but they bought them anyways, right? So, all right. So, yeah, I mean, that, I think that would be a great. It would be a great discussion to continue to have. I'm, I'm not going to go much further down that, but but as a new agent, get be a, interested. Get a KV. Get a domain. Get a KV core site up and running. Tell your story on there so that people can engage with it. And that and those will spider up quickly. That is a great evidence of success. Like this guy's got a website. That's legit, right? And so the next thing that you can do, um, I want to talk a little sidebar here. I want to talk about headshots, right? If you're a new agent, go, if you're, if you're just, key, if any agent should have good headshots, right? Um, if you're a new agent, you should definitely go get a headshot. And most uh, the guy we use charges one hundred and twenty five dollars. Does a great job. Um, you know, don't use your 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 kid because he has a new iPhone fourteen and he can really like rock that bad boy. Like you know, go get professional headshots. Get a white background. You should always have a at least one with a white background. Most things on the internet. Take example of what we're looking at right here. It's going to have a white background to it. You want to have that. A good photographer can do it with a white background. So, you you know, what you don't want to do is that cheesy, like, dark background and cut it out so your hair looks like doll hair and, and everything looks weird. Like, don't do that. Pay for a white background. You can always add a dark background to a white background. It's really hard to take the dark background away from a white background. So, you know, I mean, like, we have we have our headshots. I always put a picture with me and my wife. Because they're, they, she, she's carrying all the water for me. Like she's, she's a hottie, and they, they just like, they, they, then they're, they put up with Santa Claus if they get to meet my wife. So, you know, that's, that's always works out well for me. So get your headshots, keep them up to date. My OG agents, like, I, I have to be honest. Like when you look at an agent, or if you meet, you know, get her in, introduced to somebody, and you go look at their headshot, and it's twenty years old, you're like. Like this person is not quite dealing with reality anymore. You know, it's like, I don't, you don't look like that. Like, so keep your headshots up to date. They don't have to be every year, but every couple of years, you know, you, you should be updating your headshots and, and making them look, you know, look nice. The other things you want to do with your headshots are you want to them to be consistent, right? Because again, we're trying to show consistency. So for example, you know, and it, it was a pain, but on our, you know, here's realtor.com. Look, there's there's the headshot. Here's my LinkedIn. There's my headshot, right? It's consistent across all of these. So, you know, there's my headshot. There's my wife's headshot. So, you know, make it consistent so that, every, you know, don't just change it on one and leave every everything else. It sucks. It takes a lot of time. Jump in and do your headshot. Put it everywhere. 
So, you know, so that's, it's good. Kimmy, you had a question? Yeah, I do have a question. I have a domain, but when I Google myself, cause you just told me to, uh -huh. um, it doesn't show up under 541realestate.com. It shows up under the EXP stuff. So is, is it, that's your EXP, your, your KV core. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you go into, if you go into KV core, um, mm -hmm. under the, the IDX website area, mm -hmm. uh, no, it's under, it's under tool. Wait, it's under marketplace. Okay. Go there. Yeah. And then you'll see here, where is it? It's there. <laughs> It's, it's on here, property booze. I don't know if it's, I've already used it, so I'm gonna, it should be off of there, MailChimp. Let me know if you're seeing it, property booze. Mm -hmm. I just moved my license over like a month and a half ago, so I'm still trying oh. to migrate everything. Yeah, but it's right here. Have, it's, so it's go right to here. the vanity domain. Uh-huh, yeah, and all you do is you go in and say, here is my domain, and they'll ask you a few questions, and mm -hmm. then KV Core does all the rest. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, you bet. All right. So uh, headshots. If your husband and wife do one together, do an individual of each of you and do them together. Do a white background. Professional attire. You know, I mean, if your vibe's not, I mean, we always, I don't necessarily wear a suit or a sport coat every day, but for that, I do. Um, you know, but you know, whatever your vibe is, if you don't, if you wear golf shirts then do it with golf shirts. So, you know, you want them to recognize you when you walk through the door. So, you know, keep those up to date. Um, yeah. So consistently, so we talked about that, be consistent in, in that branding. Um, okay. So next, so we talked about KV core, look at that. The next thing you should be doing, everyone can do this. This is free. And this is, in my opinion, the best branding you can do because it's 100% guaranteed every time. That is the Google My Business area right here. I mean, take a look at how much real estate I have on this page right now for this Google My Business. I mean, literally, it's the entire side here. This is free. It's easy to do. Um, it, you know, you can add headshots. You can add, you can see, you know, this is a picture of our building. This is where our building is located, um, you know, but here's the thing that is great with Google is, you know, uh, you can request reviews. It's really easy to go in and request reviews. I have 14 five-star reviews in there, right? And what's cool is they put the reviews down here. So any agent can do this. If you're a new agent, here's here's a, a hack for you for your, if you're a new agent. You can go in, it's not, unlike Zillow, it's not tied to a property. It's just, you can, somebody can write a review of you. So you can go in to, go to your friends, go to your families and, and send them a review request and you can do character reference. It doesn't have to be on a house. You can say like, hey, can you write me a review and tell everybody I'm a great, hey, mom, <laughs> you know, can you write me a review and, and have them write your reviews. It's a great way. I mean, again, you own a ton of real estate on this on this page. If you do this, it's a little bit of a, you got to kind of run the gauntlet at first. They're going to, you're going to request it and they're going to send you a postcard to your address. And then they're going to, you know, you have to have a secret code on it and then you'll enter that in. Um, and probably the only other caveat is with this, if you're going to use um, an address of your brokerage, Sometimes it gets a little weird because if you're if whoever owns the brokerage version of this, we had this happen at my last brokerage, we hadn't done a very good job of it. And an agent jumped in and, and said, this is the address. And Google went, you know, we had a bunch of reviews from the brokerage, but we hadn't really owned it. And she like claimed it. And Google gave her like 157 reviews. Um, all of a sudden, like instant reviews. And we're like, we, I, spent, I spent a lot of time with folks in India and um on the phone they were they were like we can't undo it we're sorry start over again so like don't steal your don't claim the domain don't claim the address or the brokerage and steal other i mean it's a great way to get like instant reviews but um your broker your managing broker or your broker owner might might not love you after that so but but again a great way you don't have to necessarily when you do this every time you do sell something you should send this off most people have google and they get it um but if you're a new agent you should have this set up. You should add your pictures, add your, you know all this information, 
and you should definitely be um you know uh, ha having people write um character references for you i'm not looking at the is it i see chats is any is anything on the chat john or anybody have questions you no know, i want to talk about that really quick like character references so you know people think like oh you know it's always got to be buyers and sellers the truth is is like you could have you know, a friend of yours, it's another realtor that's willing to give a, you know, some of my reviews when I was really active guys were like from other realtors. Hey, I really loved working with John. He was so professional. I could count him to do the right thing. You know, if you decide to work with him, because we give each other reviews that way. My lenders would give me reviews. Um, you know, it could be somebody that's known you from a past business that you've done say, Hey, this, you know, they always looked out for me. Da, 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 da. So, don't be scared to put those in because a lot of times people won't actually read the reviews. They're just going to look at the top and say, Oh, I've got, he's got five, five star reviews. Right. Yeah. Lazy. That's the thing. Do that for when you do it yourself. Like I, and I have found, I used to think like, Oh man, everybody's going to read all those reviews. And then I started like using my little, like my little third person camera when I would go look at other people. And I wouldn't do that. I would just be like, dang, 14, five star reviews. Dang, he's got 41 reviews on Zillow. Seems legit. Can you help me? You know, overall, people are lazy. Right. And then overall, realtors are lazy because they don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the few and realtors all, that are what's, actually what's not lazy about this is, and this then is actually all, do this, get a lot, yeah. of a lot of benefits. Right. And what's great about this is, honestly, this is all, everything I'm showing you here is virtually free. I mean, you know, domain emails, $12 for a domain through Google. I mean, everything else here is just your time. You know, you just have to go in and, and take the time to do it. So but let's talk, Craig. I want to give some ideas to some folks that um, let's say you've been in the business for two or three years and you've got a lot of clients, but you really haven't focused on this. Yeah. There's I ways to, you know, and, and there's classes to do this, but there's a simple way. How do you put a contest together for all of your clients and say, hey, I'm looking to get reviews is a really big deal. I'm going to give. For every, I mean, you can literally pay people. Yeah. Hey, everybody that does did. a review, I'm going to give you a $5 gift card to Starbucks, and I'm going to put your name into a pot, and I'm going to give a $500, you know, something out. Now, you might think $500 is a lot, or even $250 or $100. People will do things for those things. First, they want to help you, but then when you give them a little Benny, it's fun. Yeah. And the idea is, and it also saves you a lot of time. Now, virtually, you could call everybody and ask people. And surprising, hey, would you, hey, would you be totally against helping me out? <laughs> yeah. Watch the wording we just said there. Would you be totally against helping me out? <laughs> yeah. We Who's going to say email. no? Yes, I'm yeah. totally against it. Hey, yeah. I really need this review. Would you be open to writing just 10 words? Kimmy yeah. was awesome. I can't wait to work with her again. Thank you. We actually created an email with, so we wanted to get, we wanted to get, Google, we wanted to get Realtor, we wanted to get Zillow. So we created an email that had links in the email yeah. for each of them. And we said, what we did is we'll give you a $5 Starbucks gift card for every one you write. And if you do all three, we'll give you a $20 gift card. And it blew up. I mean, we got so many freaking reviews. It was, and it was like overnight, just boop, all of a sudden we had all these reviews. And let me so, tell you, you spent 300, I mean, you spent oh, $300. Yeah. Was, now, make sure you send that email two or three times because they won't see it. Yeah. The people that didn't, remember, people do not see emails just like they don't, you think you see the everyone's, you don't. So send it three times. The few people that get offended, they're not your fans anyways. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then realize that, man, if you had to spend $500 and you got 10 or 15 reviews right away, that is, that's, that's well worth it. Yeah. Well yeah. worth it. All right, so let's we got a uh, we got 15 more minutes. Let's talk about the biggies. Okay, let's talk about the ones that you should be that 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 are going to help you own the first page as quickly as possible, okay? And, and in in our space in the real estate space, those are Zillow, Realtor, LinkedIn, Facebook, um and your your own your own domain. I mean, your your website. So I'm mean, you can kind of see those there. I mean, if you if you have all of those, your domain, Realtor, LinkedIn, this one's Yelp. We do Yelp as well. Zillow. There's Facebook. 
this one just showed this one showed up like a month ago and it's making me freaking crazy because I, I can't get it to go away. But you know, and, and you'll see strange stuff. But if you own if you do your if you go in and you take the time to do those five, you you'll pretty much own the you know, Google my business, your domain, realtor, LinkedIn, Zillow, Facebook. And if you want, you can Yelp spiders really well also. So, I mean, I don't own the entire first page, but I own a lot of it, right? Most people are going to look at just that. Most people are just going to look at, wow, five-star reviews, five-star reviews. This guy's legit. And that's enough. That's enough. They'll, they'll usually be like, hey, somebody recommended you or I saw you online. So um, let's talk about the, the big dog. Zillow, um, a couple of things you should be doing on Zillow. You need to go to, to it's called the the you, biggest mistake most agents make is they sign up for a Zillow account, um, like a consumer, and then they're, they kind of get backed in. There's, you know, there's, it's called Premier Agent. You go to Zillow Premier Agent, set up an account there. Um, Zillow would prefer you to pay them. Uh, but if you don't, they'll still give you, you some love. They'll let you set it up. The back end, both of Zillow and Realtor uh, suck. They don't, they spend all their money on trying to get leads, not on trying to help us make it leads. But, um, you know, go create a Zillow, a Zillow Premier Agent account. Um, you need to be constantly looking at it. I mean, like once you start selling houses, even if you have, if you're a new agent and you have a couple here, um, you, you know, you, you're going to see like people are going to see like this for me is one of my best sales tools. Like, yeah, look, 136 houses. This guy's clearly selling houses, right? He's got 41 reviews. We always ask for Zillow re reviews. Obviously, we don't get them all, but, you know, we we always push to get them, right? So, you know, and, and it shows kind of the kind of houses that you're selling. This is pretty good. Um, there's a couple of things on Zillow. Uh I'm going to say something and my team leads, I'm going to, you, I, my team leads are going to blow me up and my team members hopefully like it. And this is actually my, one of my pet peeves that this is, I'm, I'm going to beat this drum until I'm not an agent anymore. But um, if you're a team lead and you're claiming your team members production, you're hurting them. You're hurting them. And if you're thinking about EXP in the right way, you want to you want to them to leave your team eventually and start their own team and grow their own organization and the best way to do that is to help them build evidence of their own success i see so many team leads that claim all the production of their agents and so when their agents leave they have no evidence of success their zillow page is empty you're not doing them any favors you're not helping them grow their business um so I, I know it's controversial with my team leads. Um, I look at that as a vanity number now. Uh, it, it really doesn't help you. So um, especially because Zillow will roll all those up in if, when you create a team page. So um, I, I would encourage you to start letting your, letting your team members own their production in the MLS so they actually start building their own evidence of success. And, and feel free to call me later if you want to yell at me about that. So Allie's got it. Allie's thinking right too. Yeah. Hey, Craig, we actually have till 1030. So remember that. Just okay, great. Yeah. And Zillow changed all of that. Up until the up until Zillow, nobody ever knew. Like I, I could told I could have told you I sold a thousand houses and you'd have no evidence. There's no way the, the consumer couldn't go look in the MLS on the back end and, and see what you're selling. Zillow opened that all, blew that all wide open. You want your team members to be able to have their own evidence of success. So I'm going to get off my soapbox on that one. Um, so Zillow, make sure you're claiming your sales. If you are not a premier agent, you have to go in and, and, and they'll, they'll do it. They don't. It's funny because I was a premier agent. I was paying a lot of money for Zillow leads and I stopped doing it. They just like stopped. They were like, oh, yeah, apparently Craig doesn't sell houses anymore. And then the McHugh team stopped selling houses. So I had to call them up. I'm like, hey, um, still selling houses. Maybe I, can you relink those? And they were they actually did. But um, you sometimes have to go in and check every time you sell a house to make sure you get credit for it. Again, this, this is big. 
like, you know, a consumer takes the time to look at that. They're going to be like, yeah, this guy's, guy's selling houses. This guy's team is selling houses. So um, keep it up to date. Keep your, keep your, you know, your bios up to date, current headshots. You can see my team members. I make them all shoot the same headshot, same photographer, white background. It should always look very similar, right? Um, next one's going to be realtor.com. Again, super simple. Realtor.com goes through this sort of phases. Like we used to have a bunch of reviews on here. I can't find them anymore. Maybe I don't know where to look anymore. Um, but, you know, still shows them selling houses, thankfully. Hey, Joanne's um, got a question. Oh, Joanne, sure. go ahead. And... Hi, I just wanted to... I'm not used to you being so cordial. Like, <laughs> usually she just spouts up. I don't know the story here. Sorry, we love Joanne. I'm trying to be polite. I just wanted to point out that when Craig was saying that... Um, you can see that he's shown houses in his area. That's how I find referral partners in other cities. Like if I, I just had a, a client who needed to sell their house in San Juan Batista. So I looked in there and there were all these agents that said they work there, but I looked for the person that had the most sales in that area. And there's only one person that had six sales. Everyone else had zero because it's a very small community. Yeah. And so that agent was with a very small independent, which normally I wouldn't choose, but when I ended up calling her, she grew up there. She knew the area. She sold houses there. So that's another reason to be able to show that you've sold houses in your area because when other agents are looking for a referral partner, they're going to pick you over somebody who doesn't look like they've sold anything there. Yeah. 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 And again, I, I mean, I think being, thank you for that. Um, you know, you can try and, you know, if you're on a team, I, I get it. You're on a team for a reason. And and that it's a always I I am a big proponent of teams because I tell new agents there's only two ways to make money in this to to make money in this business. One of them is time. If you stick around long enough, even if you're a crappy agent, you can make a career out of this. The other is money, and that generally means teams. Like join a team to accelerate your learning and your knowledge. But teams aren't a life sentence, especially in the EXP model. They're not a life sentence. You as a team lead, you want to move your team members off your team and get them to be a successful agent so you can ultimately help them build their own team. And then we get to retire and I don't, I, I can not have to do this till I'm John's age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other ones I want you guys to think about LinkedIn, right? I am actually not a giant LinkedIn fan. Um, it's just, I find it just sort of time consuming. I do enough of it to, you know, be dangerous, but I can tell you right now, LinkedIn spiders really well. You know, I mean, it, it's always in the top four. So take the time to create a LinkedIn account, go out and follow and make connections with other agents. It's really easy to do just like, Hey friend, Hey friend, Hey friend, you know, go through and find your clients, post enough on there to, you know, to you know, post some real estate information and post a few things on there. Um, but LinkedIn does really well. If you know, you don't have to necessarily be putting a lot of content on there, but have all of your sort of consistent information on there, and it spiders really well. So, um, and it, it actually was interesting. It, this in Google, it even actually connected my wife's account to mine, which is interesting. Um, I would say Yelp, Yelp spiders amazingly well. Um, they are a pain in the butt to work with because they want to sell you. They want you to pay for their service, you know? So they are constantly like, hey, like we can get you more, more information or more reviews or, you know, I would just blow them off, but they're, they're page spiders really well. Um, and yeah, I, I don't have any reviews or anything on there, but again, I don't necessarily, most people aren't going to go look at Yelp to figure out a real estate agent, but it is going to show them like, you know, yeah, the, these, these guys are acting like real estate. This is their gig. This is their career. This is their real estate agents. Um, we talked a little about Zillow. Um, you know, Facebook is going to be the, the next one. You should have a Facebook business account period. Um, it, it, it comes in really, you know, they spider really well. Um, you know, my wife made this background in Canva. 
it was really simple. They have actually, you know, it's, they have templates for it. Um, you should be putting content in there. Um, and it should be, you know, it should be a little bit of everything. So, you know, we try and shoot for about 70, 30. So, you know, do posts that make you look real. I just, I just hit 60 pounds I've lost. So I did a post about it, got a lot of engagement and, you know, that was, so, yeah, but, you know, do, do real estate stuff on there. It spiders really well. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it's, it's worth having on there. So, um, and, and then you're going to have stuff that's not you like this. I, I don't know. I don't know why this one spiders so well, um, but that's my old brokerage. I can't get rid of it. Um, it's frustrating. And then we just sort of get into other McHughes. So, but you know, if you're using a team, so the other thing you should be doing is searching for both your team and you, you might want to regionalize it. Like, I think if I just, if I just do my team name, I think we still get pretty good engagement as a sidebar on these as well. Um, sometimes do it as do it. If you go do an incognito browser, or if you're using Safari, they call it a private window. Um, that doesn't have any sort of predetermined stuff in it. So it doesn't preload anything. It gives you kind of a cleaner view of what the public would be seeing versus what you already have. But, um, you know, same same kind of thing. And then lastly, you, you should be Googling both you. If you have a team or a domain, Google that and see what comes up. But then do you, you know, like I did Craig McHugh Realtor Colorado Springs, um, and you can start to see these things should be working pretty much in conjunction. Like I didn't say the McHugh team, but this came up, right? It understood, and Google understood like Craig McHugh is on the McHugh team and, and I own this real estate. If not, you can talk with them or you can go in the back end and kind of link the two together as in keywords so that, you know, this shows up whether they type my name or they type my team name, um, Here's LinkedIn again, Zillow, Realtor, Facebook, YouTube. I, I'm still getting better at YouTube, um, but YouTube does spite. It's the number two most, uh, like the most searches. The, the number two search engine in the world is YouTube. So if you're doing YouTube, you know, it's really good. You'll start to get spidering in there. You'll, it'll spider up really fast. So people will see that. Um, you know, it's interesting because most of my YouTube stuff is this kind of stuff. So, you know, I don't know that it's really like public facing, but you can do both um, if you want to do that. Um, I don't even know what this one is. There's Yelp again. This one's weird. USDA properties in Alamosa. Like I, that's 150 miles from where I work. But, and then you also start to see like, you know, these are other, this is Compass. These are some of my listings. But, you know, again, it does show that evidence of success. So, um, yeah. Any questions? I've been talking a lot. Come on, someone's got to have at least a question. Well, I was going to jump in real quick because this is this is something we're actually working on on our team is exposure, right? Is getting on here, getting on the Zillow, getting Google reviews. And when you do this, it, the, all, uh, all I can think in my head is that, uh, you know, we have time. In real estate, we always say, oh, we don't have time to do it. It's like, we do, right? And the biggest reason we're looking at doing this is, um, you know, top of mind awareness. People start seeing your face here. They see it there. They see it over here. You're the one that they want to call. So it maybe doesn't get direct business that day. However, now people are seeing you on Zillow, Realtor.com. They're seeing you on your Facebook. You're engaging. You're doing things. They're going to remember to say, oh, let's call, let's call Craig. Oh, man, do you see that post? He lost 60 pounds. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, let's do this. You know, so I think that this is powerful. And to me, now I feel like it's a challenge. I have to get a lot of this set up by next Wednesday because I'll have time to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So every yeah. time we're wondering why, why are we not successful or why are we not getting to the next step? It's because maybe we're not taking the, the 30 minutes that we're trying to figure out what to do to actually do something that could help us. Maybe not today, but in a week or two weeks or three months. So I think this is powerful. You make it look pretty easy to get stuff set up. It's not rocket science. You know, just go in there and get it, you know, just start doing it. And you may what I love is the way you started this is that it's always a work in progress, right? Yeah. If we wait for it to be perfect, we're never going to post it, right? So just get it out there. You can always fix the kinks as you go. But the, the main thing I'm getting from this is just get it out there. Just start doing it. 
Yeah. So and everything on here is free. That's the thing. I, I, if you don't hear anything else, like, I mean, really, all everything here is these are all free accounts. LinkedIn's free. Zillow's free. Realtor's free. You know, even you know, even if you're using KV Core, the the you know the the website, you know, they, it's just part of what you get. Like, you don't have to pay for any of this. The Google My Business, it it's free. Like, why wouldn't you do this for free? Thanks, Jason. And a big thing, just to add in on, like, you know, it's the Google My Business is free. On the back end of Google My Business, when you get into like, you know, like you can add in like what keywords, right? If they're typed into Google that you want to pop up on the feed and those keywords don't even have to be like realtor, real estate or homes. And like you can add all those in, but you can also add in like the top producers in your area. And mm -hmm. so like you can add their names, like those guys ah. who sell a hundred homes a year and have them wondering like, when I Google my name, why does he pop up? Yeah, you know? yeah, that's a great idea. I never even thought of that. Actually, I had that happen the other day. I Googled somebody and somebody else's name popped up. I was like, damn, like pimped them. <laughs> like, that was smart to do that. Yeah, so, like where I'm at, like the top five producers in the area, like I pop up with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, and, and just so you guys know too, there's a ton of hacks and stuff like that you can do. I mean, if you just go Google some of that stuff, you know, it's all public knowledge and there's there's a, just a lot of good information. It'd be fun just to do a, a class here with like, let's talk about the hacks that people are doing to like that. That's, that is that is um, Tyler, like brilliant. But, you know, you can just sort of write somebody else's success, you know, and, and you know, maybe they don't resonate with that person, you know? So, yeah, somebody's already asking, Tyler's teaching a class on this next week, right? <laughs> he just volunteered. <laughs> what else? Anybody else have any thoughts, comments? Covered everything. If, if, not, if we don't have any of this set up, what would you say would be the first one to us for us to do right away? What, what would be the first, whether it be Zillow, Realtor.com, what do you think would have the, the highest impact if we were to just get one of them done right away? What would that be? Your domain. Getting your own domain is, is huge. And it takes a minute to do that. And then linking that to your KV core. I, I really feel like when when, it can, when I'm looking on online, yeah, then I mean, there's other sites. But like when I see an agent that um, has their own domain, that I mean, maybe because I'm an IT guy and kind of a nerd, but it looks to me like like they've taken the time, like this is their gig, like they're all in, right? So, I mean, that that would be for me and it's an easy one. It does take time. And so, you know, you you want to get that going as soon as possible because it's going to take time to spider up and, and Google to kind of put those two together. But that, and then number two would be Zillow. Get your Zillow Premier account. And even if you don't have it, you know, well, here's the other thing too. If you're on a team, this is another awesome hack for new agents. If you join a team, make sure the first thing you do is link your Zillow Premier account, your Zillow agent account to your team. Because when you go look at your, when you go look, what happens is you automatically get all the sales, like you're part of the team. So if somebody goes look at, look at your account, they're going to see like, hey, they've sold, that person sold 130 houses. So you get a lot of like, you get a lot of cred from the team in Zillow, but you know your your team lead will have to help you or whoever does that. But link those two together, and you kind of get instant cred from them. So that's a good one. And then yeah, probably that order. Your get your domain squared away, Zillow Realtor because those are those are industry specific as well. And then you know Facebook and LinkedIn probably would be the next after that. Hey Craig, I got a question. It's a little bit off topic, but. What uh, what advertising do you actually pay for? What what do you think is important enough to, to actually pay for when it comes to advertising? Yeah, so um, we do HomeBot, but that, that doesn't really cost much. But it, it really is a good way to kind of stay in contact. Um, we've been doing a mag. I don't have. I'm not maps. I don't have one in front of me. But a, a magazine um, that is real estate specific stuff and it's branded to us. We're on the cover. Our clients really like that. Um, we. 
other than that, I don't, I stopped buying leads. I don't do, I canceled Y Lobo. I canceled, um, I, I canceled <laughs> Zillow. I felt, I felt the ROI was just not worth it. So we kind of refocused all of that. We do a lot of Popeyes. We do a lot of client engagement. So um, right now there's about 300 bags of marshmallows and chocolate bars downstairs for s'mores that is freaking killing me. I keep telling my wife, like, if you don't get those out of this house, I'm oh, I'm going to eat marshmallows and chocolate tonight. So like, because we're getting ready, she's got this, you know, she does this some more, she's doing a some more kit with for the 4th of July. And, you know, you lift a little like your, your, your uh, referrals are some more important to us than anything else. And, and, you know, we draw, she goes out and she drops those to all of our clients. Um, so we do a lot of that level of engagement with Popeye's. Um, my wife is also uh, our biggest probably thing that, that, for us that we get probably the most business out of is we track every kind of date and anniversary possible. So with our clients, so we have our clients, you know, the, 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 the husband, wife, or whoever, you know, whatever that combo is, their birthdays, their house anniversaries, their anniversaries. We keep track of all of their kids' birthdays. We, and then we, we send out, um, ice cream uh we do baskin robbins or we do one uh, a local one now um that we she probably sends out 50 to 70 cards a week to people and i can't i'll tell you the single best thing you can do if you really want to do it if you have to own it is send birthday cards with a ice cream you know a, a five dollar ice cream to a gift card to the, the kids i've literally i've now had three times like where parents have brought their kids to my front door and like made them like thank us. Like kids don't get mail anymore, you know? And like, so when they get a card in the mail with like, it's like people call us, we constantly get Facebook posts of like, we're having ice cream. Thanks McHugh's, you know? And, and like we get tons of, of just amazing feedback from just sending cards. Um, and my wife does, she just has, she's got, She's got this giant box of like cards. It's her love language too. She loves that stuff. So like she she pumps out the cards and and we get so much referral business from it. And clients just reach out all the time. Thank you for the gift card. Thank you for the anniversary. Thank you for the, you know, just the, a card. People don't get mail anymore. So does that, that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Was that, was that a misspeak? Did you say 50 yeah. cards a week? Oh, it easily 50, 50 to oh 75 <laughs> cards a week. Yeah. She's a freaking machine. Like she, she cranks out the, she cranks out the cards, but they, I mean, it really is the best $5 that we spend. I mean, and, you know, and we get just so, I just got a tech, an email this morning from a couple It was their wedding anniversary. They're an older couple we've known for you. We helped them sell several houses and he's just, like thanks us every time we send him something he reaches out and thanks us and he gives us referrals and all the time so um yeah it's it's sort of that's our how we're spending our marketing dollars on just a higher touch with our client base um through popeyes and cards what else you got i don't think i have anything else i had exactly an hour's worth of content john yeah, well, you weren't paying attention. You know, there's always an hour 90. So, hey, we can finish early. But here, one of the things I want to talk about, guys, is that, you know, what you're seeing from Craig here is not complicated. And I have so many times where agents act like things are really complicated or it's so hard to be a top producer. What I want to tell you is, if you look at this, is that what it is, it's being consistent with little things. It's taking one step at a time. It's actually implementing it. And then somebody say, oh, I'm sending 50 cards a week. Well, not everybody needs to send 50 cards a week. The question is, are you sending five a week? How many can send one card a day and do that every day? And so the things are, guys, like, okay, it's what's our vision of what your business looks like and then what things need to put in place. And what we're building is assets. What Craig is building are assets that he's building them once. Now he just has to check on them. 
and they keep working, right? And then we have to update them every once in a while. I just actually did some things now, Craig, as you were doing that. I Googled some stuff for me, and I'm like, oh, crap. I forgot that those aren't linked anymore, and I just forgot about that. So if you go to Coach John K. Sellers now, just and I'm doing all this marketing on other stuff, and if you go there, it goes page not found. I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I can't believe this. Um, yeah. And I'm spending thousands on doing other things. So it's one step at a time, right, Craig? And then you guys didn't start with 50 cards a week. Oh, no, no, not at all. But so you started just, by... It's easy now. But you started by paying attention to each client of, hey, what are your birthdays? What are your anniversaries? What are your house anniversary? Then actually putting them into KV Core or whatever system you're using, and then having a disciplined time to actually look at those every day, every week. And that that's so many things, guys, we talk about things, is that when you're trying to run a business, and, and this is what we're seeing right now, and Craig said in the beginning, the last couple of years, it was like real estate came by luck. If I showed up enough places, I found people that did deals. That's really what it was. Now you're finding the people that have a structure in their business and a structure in their day are the ones that are thriving. And so, you know, I had a conversation with an agent yesterday that's that's a great guy that's struggling a little bit. And, you know, he's been in this a long time. And he says, I got 15 more years. I said, what are you going to do differently? And I said, you know, what are you going to do differently? And his thought really came back together was, I've got to start treating this like a business every day and look at where I want it to be in five years and start putting the pieces in place consistency so that they start adding on top of it because he's been in the business for 10 years. But if you went and try to find this stuff online, I bet I could look at half the people on this call. I'm guilty. Yes. Half of you have been in the business for 10 years. Don't have this stuff in place. Doesn't, and you've been great agents. What if you did? What if you did? That's what I love. What if I did this? What is it going to look like? And realize that how can we be building every year that the business isn't getting the same? It's actually getting easier. Uh, sometimes it gets harder because we're doing twice as many deals. <laughs> so that's a you know that's a pro a different problem. But the idea is if you're doing the same deals every year and it's not getting a lot easier, then it's because we haven't implemented some of these things, and that's the difference, right? That's the agents that implement these things don't get blown out when the waves come because waves will come yeah and can i chime in too yeah Tyler. Totally. And, and and this stuff is like you know there there's green light work where it's income producing activities and there's red light work and because there's working in your business which is production and there's working on your business which is all of this and because on the overall scope like everything that craig is going over is kind of on point of like, and I'll, I'll ask the group, like put it in the chat and, and people have heard me say this before. What do you think is more important? What you know or who you know? Anybody at all? What's more important? Who you, who know. you know. Who you know. See, and I stand on wrong. It's who knows you. Right. Yes. That is the most important thing. And so this ex this kind of exposure and putting yourself out there and implementing these things, hey, like who knows you is singularly like the most important thing. So like taking the time to do these red light activities, right, to really like build your name and put yourself out there, like there's an incredible importance behind it. Yeah. And the, and I always tell people, like, you know, I, I'm going to date myself. And I say, I always say, like, you know, imagine their little Rolodex. Everybody's got a little Rolodex in their head, right? What's on mm -hmm. the realtor? What's on the realtor card? You know, when they're sitting at a party and somebody goes, Man, I think we're going to downsize, or hey, I think we're going to sell it. Or my kid wants to buy a house, or, you know, and, and, you know, do all those people that you know or know you go, I got a guy for you. He's mm -hmm. great. And I think, you know, it's one of those things too, where I think the biggest mistake we make is it, it, you know, the, the, the realtor card can get replaced or fall out easily if you just don't engage with them. But like by sending those cards, sending the, you know, staying engaged. The other thing my wife, my sends out the cards a lot uh, is condolence cards. My wife 
watches Facebook like a hawk. We, we friend all of our clients. Anything that goes great in their life, they get a card. Anything that goes wonky in their life, that there's a death in the family. Um, even one of the things that we do is if they're if they lose a pet, if the a dog or a cat animal, everybody posts like, you know, that, you know, Skippy died and, and it sucks. And they, you know, that's their dog. We go, she has a, you can get them on Amazon, but she also has a, a company. She buys them now. It's just a little rock and it has the, a little picture of their breed and it has their name on it. And it costs us like $25. And she sent, she orders them and sends them. They arrive in the mail. I mean, I literally have clients. We go to their house. They're like, come with us. Look, look right there. There's the rock that you gave us, you know, with Skippy's name on it. Like, you know, and, and it's just one thing that you can do just above so that that you own that little chunk of real estate in their noggin. And when somebody says real estate or real estate agent or sale or buy, they go, don't call anybody else. Call these people right now. And an easy, a, a second piece uh, to what you're saying on, you know, inputting into KB Core, like people's birthdays and stuff. They, you know, Jason's with me on the old car sales verbiage, and they, like, keep it simple, stupid. Right. They, if you have a buyer and they, like, you know, like, what's the percentage of buyers you have uh, who have lending put together compared to uh, cash buyers? If there's lending involved, dude, the moment you send them to the lender or or if they already have like lending put together by the time you talk to them, ask the lender, what are their birth dates? And have them do, uh, hand it over to you. Like they're going to have it no matter what. And yeah. then you can just easily implement and put it into your KB core and save it. Like, like you're just collect the birthdays. <laughs> yeah. We do it actually as part of our, when we meet with a, a, either a listing presentation or a buyer presentation is right on the first page of like, what are your birthdays? We tell them like, we love to love on our clients. We love to send you gifts. And I you know, and like, we, we ask for it right up front. If I don't get it right then at closing, if I don't come home, if I don't have it, then by closing, if I don't have it, like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my, my rear end chewed by the, uh, by the uh, customer satisfaction department is going to give me an earful when I get home. So yeah, I, I know don't get, get the number, get, get those dates. Don't, don't not do that. Cause that's, it's, it's our number one thing. So what else? Anybody else got anything? Questions? I saw somebody, who was it? Was it Kimmy? She just implemented the vanity URL by my KB core site while I was on the call. I love it. That's awesome. So, so and I, I just went in and, and picked out a, a domain. <clears throat> Pretty simple. We've been thinking about getting that. And I also looked up Zillow while, while everybody was talking. It was a five minute process to, to do that. I didn't yeah. start it yet because I want to put the new domain in there, but su super simple. But you said something that really confused me. Craig, what's a Rolodex? <laughs> <laughs> Just having fun, buddy. Thanks for everything. No, man. Just I know. I, I said, I, I said I'm going to have to own that one, but yeah, no. I tried yeah. Googling that. I was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. For all you young people out there, it was when we used to put names on cards and pieces of paper <laughs> before this all happened. <laughs> so yeah you know one of the things Craig that you know you talked about there is just as simple guys when you get that domain then that idea is you know really nobody should have in my opinion nobody should have a jason at exp.com no. nobody should be using you know at any company right it's it's yours you are own, you know we want you to own that real estate you know so that when things change or things happen you don't have to wait i mean i've seen agents that um you know have this old domain i mean here's like even craig like he's looking through it as much as he's tried to change this from his cutting edge a year ago if he has the correct email in there now if he had had a cutting edge email Guess what? It'd be showing up the cutting edge email. But if he has his own email, guess yep. what's at least still showing up? People can actually get a hold of him. Yeah. The brokerage isn't keeping all of your emails. Right. And no Not one, that yeah, you, anyone here would ever down, lead, completely. right? No one here would ever leave the XP. But um, yeah, if that happened to happen, um, you know, it makes it a lot easier. You don't, you don't lose, you know, those domains. Well, I also think that's really great advice, guys, as you're talking to other real estate agents your friends and other people at other companies to let them know. 
you know, that they might want to change that. Here's the benefits. Why? Right. And that's just showing leadership. And it's showing. So when I talk to, I talk to a lot of agents all the time about, you know, coming to EXP and, you know, a small percentage of actually come, but man, if they have that email wrong, I'm trying to figure out how I can add value to them, you know, and share with them like, Hey, you might want to think about this. Right. So, and that also shows more professionalism as, you know, as Craig talked about, you know, so I love that everyone's just stepping at one piece at a time, guys. Um, so, Craig, unless anybody's got any questions, um, let's wrap up. Uh, yeah. Does anybody else have any quick questions or even long questions? Would be great. Or any success stories they're having with implementing reviews? I'd, I'd love to hear that. If anyone's really had some, you know, benefits of doing what Craig's talked about, I'd love to hear that as well. Hey, Craig, I do have one quick question. Um, when you're looking at um, building your um, your team and you're looking at uh, other agents to talk to about EXP, what site do you go to to do any um, research on that potential uh, agent? So, you know, I, I mean, Zillow is one, but if it's somebody that's on a team, you're, you're not going to really get a, a good feel it for it. Um, our MLS has some ability. We, we have the ability to go in and actually look at an agent's um, production over a period of time. So I, most likely if, uh, you know, so um, I have a list of all of the agents in our MLS that I acquired. Um, and uh, and then I'll, I'll go and look at them and then I'll cross check them against their production in our MLS. And just to try and get a, a, a feel for where they're at. If they're on a team, like I said, and the, the team lead is claiming all their production, then you won't really know that. But, you know, the other thing you can do, too, is just Google their name. I mean, if they're really serious about being an agent, they, you know, they, they probably have set up some of these other these other um, tools and you can kind of see that. Um, but, yeah, that's that's really where I go first. There's other pieces to this exposure as well, like things like working on your business, like even within EXP is, you know, I would challenge anybody on the call, like how many of you have properly set up your agent profile? And because like, if you need an a agent in a specific area for a referral, right, or, you know, someone outside of the area is looking for an agent in your area, it's like, and, like if you go to EXP Enterprise, and you click agent directory, you can just type in a city and right? like, does your name pop up? Right. And making sure to like go up into that on the back end within enterprise and like adding in every single city you serve and to make sure that you pop up right when someone is looking for someone in that area. And it's just a like, really big, important thing too, because hey, I've been working on that with uh, some of, like the people on my team who never set it up. And I was kind of on point of like, like, Hey, you're this Ashland, Oregon specialist. But when you type in Ashland, <laughs> like you don't pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one other thing I forgot as well, email signatures, like take the time to make it look pretty. You know, I mean, are you guys seeing this uh, window with my email signature on it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this uh, this is a, a a tool that I use. It's called Web, or it's called My Signature. It's mysignature.com. and I think I pay. I want to say I pay ten or fifteen dollars a month for my whole team, um, and it goes in and you know it, it, you can put your picture in, your logo, even has the little like um, you know this content is specific. You know, it has the little like don't steal this email or if it wasn't for you, delete it kind of thing. But um, it's it's really simple, and it also everyone on my team has it. We all have a, the same email signature. They all look great, you know. Have you know, it makes it really easy. You can when you add people, it's easy to add them, and then you just go and drop it in in Google. So um, you know, take the time to do a good email signature. So again, just because we're a business, this is what we do. And to the email signature side, I don't know what the rules are in Colorado, but. In Oregon, you know, the disclosed limited agency like agreement between you and a client, hey, like I, my email signature has 
that in there because you're supposed to give it to a client right away. So like everybody has that disclosed limited agency like right yeah. in the email signature, like first touch, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just build that in. I mean, the, the, the nice thing about that, um, the signature one, uh, I just forget the name of it, my signature. It makes it really easy just to drop it in there. So, yeah, and again, and these are all little things, but I mean, that that doesn't cost much. It's easy to do and, you know, put it in there and it just adds that next, that sort of one step above somebody who's just doesn't have anything. It makes it look like this is your gig. I'm serious about this business. I can't tell you how many OG agents I've taken business from who, you know, people just, you know, were like, it didn't seem like he seemed like he wasn't really into it anymore, you know? It's like you you just had all the right it like all was worked together. So so I got a, a quick funny question. You mm-hmm. said it earlier, but I'm getting lost when I Google domain names. What's what's a good reputable place to go to? Go Daddy, or where would you recommend to go no, get that? Domain? Google, use Google. Um, I I used to use I've used GoDaddy and Gator, but it's it's G- Google dot um slash domains yeah it's, it's just stupid simple google.com slash oh, domains yeah it's actually domains they call it domains.google but you, yeah it's google.com to, okay slash domains but you can go and you can search for your domain you can say get it they they charge you 12 bucks and if you have a gmail kind of back end account it'll just automatically link those two together and then it's really easy just to say like, hey, I want my, I want to use this as my main email and it'll just set it all up for you. It, it links all your Gmail together. It's, it's, it works really well and they're cool. stupid cheap. Thanks for everything, Craig. This was awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, Craig, I want to thank you so much for helping us with this, guys. And, and here's the thing, guys, what Craig's talking about is real world here. You know, we hear a lot about theory and we hear about all this fancy stuff that seems overwhelming and so expensive. And what Craig's really talking about here is stuff that you can do that's not that complicated, that is hugely important to build the foundations for our businesses. And, you know, it's it's funny when you think, well, I can do these basic things online, and then I can actually treat my clients with respect and find all these little things and send cards and be present with people and see what they're doing, and I can actually do business. Yes, it really does work that way. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it really does the work that yeah. way. But what yeah. you're not hearing is all this stuff is simple. Doesn't mean it's easy to do all the time because it takes discipline and discipline is the key to moving through to get the things, most of the things you want in life require discipline and to try a focused effort for a certain amount of time. And I honor you, Craig, for doing that. And I know that's what you do. And I know so many of the top folks do here. So thank you again, guys, for some of you that missed this in the beginning, I want to let you know that the, um, we have opened up for EXPCon now, October 2nd through the 5th, so you can register. Uh, we're going to get a huge turnout, guys. And as I said, if you a person that doesn't go to events, you're missing out. If you think you have to wait till you're successful to go, that is foolish. You need to go before. And you're going to do it. Top producers go to events. That's what they do. So either if you want to become a top producer, you need to be there. And if you're a top producer already and you don't go, then I'm like, well, what are you missing out on? So you can register for that now. The rooms will be available there at the hotel, but also there's lots of other less expensive hotels that are very close by. And I recommend you get very close by because you're going to want to be able to hang out with folks. So again, thank you so much, Craig. Um, Appreciate you you guys and appreciate you and Kelly and all you do and all the folks that are here. So go rock and roll, guys.